Hello, hello, hello. This is JSM. SM Studios. Uh, I am in my studio and I have got the door shut. I've done some rewiring, done a bit of tidying, uh, moved some things about, uh, might be building a shelf for the two monitors that run on the Windows 98 PC that plays the MIDI and does the recording on Cool Edit Pro. Why am I here? I'm actually here to test the background noise of the room. So I can hear the traffic on the road uh, in front in the front of the house and I'm in the back attic at the back of the house. Yeah, I can hear the rumbling, but I can also hear the fan from the studio computer. I've got nothing else on, to be honest, just the keyboard, the amp, uh, the mixing desk, and of course the, um, the studio computer. Sorry, I got distracted there. I think I can hear, um, what do you call it, reflections in the room. Because I've, act I've only just cleared one wall. I've had to move the two acoustic guitars, which are hanging here now. But I have to shift them out of the room. If any of you have a studio and you play with acoustic, or sorry, if you play with loud music and you've got an acoustic guitar in there, it resonates. It, it, it hums. It, 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 it fucks your recording up. So I have to keep moving them. I'm also a bit quiet on the recording level for Cool Edit Pro at the moment, but I'm about a foot away from the microphone, and I think the gain is quite high. Do you see what I mean? I'm about an inch away now. So really, this is to test the room. Early reflections, you can forget the eggshells and the egg things and all that crap. I might put a couple of curtains up or some pictures, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not really bothered about that. I... After playing today, I've decided just to put the keyboard on, put the mic on, not going near the mix. I just yesterday sent the singer, uh, and I'm sure she's going to let me tell you who she I think she already would, but I just, I want, I want her to know exactly what I'd like to do and whether she's happy or not. But yesterday, I decided to try and see how the beats were. This is a bit tinny is it just that the, the, no this the some this is awfully bright this there's a tss, tss, and considering the level on cool edit pro it's not because i've got high gain there's no fucking ways that's the case um okay i don't know uh, i don't know i don't i don't have a clue okay um so yeah yesterday for the first time on the mix, I captured the beats as the predominant thing in the song with the singer singing. And boy, have I done a good job at the beats. My exact words to my Emma were, uh, well, when I went downstairs is, well, honey, if I've never done drum and bass before in the past, I certainly have now. And she just looked at me and said, well, the neighbour's back. She stays away a lot, the neighbour. She's hardly ever home. Um, but the neighbour's back, so you better watch your noise levels. And I thought, OK, time to stop. It was John's bedtime anyway. So... I listened to that for the first time. I made, I think, about six different versions. And I was quite pleasantly surprised. I don't like the brightness on this microphone. It, I don't know if it's because there's not enough bass to compensate or... One, two, one, two, one, two. I don't know. Okay, I don't know. I, I, I keep drifting into this paranoid place with this microphone. I love the quality of it, by the way. Um don't know yeah i've got to stop thinking about that it's doing my head and so i had a really good day yesterday just chucking that and it was a nightmare i'll tell you it was a nightmare me get me getting the sounds to cut through because the beats were so in your face it, 
the last time this happened to me was with Rhett when I did NATO and we, we did the songs that we did. Uh, and that's on my website, looplibrary.co.uk and look for NATO, N-A-I-T-O. And the song is um, Gotta Get Online. get online something like that about connecting to the internet and we did that in around 2000 so you, you, that's when the internet was quite new so anyway um what was i gonna say yeah i had an idea for a song but i warned Rhett, and i i clearly told him look mate you are gonna have to shout because when you hear this backing this backing is gonna it's, it's, it's going to stop you being heard unless you get over the mix, unless you get that voice of yours over the mix. And boy, you did a good job. So if you want to go and listen to that song, Gotta Get Online, um, by NATO, which was m- me and Rhett, JSM and Rhett, um, you'll see what I mean. And funny enough, that's what happened yesterday. So I'm listening to the mix and I'm turning these beats up and I still want to do a few other things with the beats, feed them through analog compression. Sorry, what am I talking about? Analog distortion. Then compress that and see what that sounds like. Truth is, I don't need to. When I heard what I heard yesterday, I thought, (laughs) game over. I've achieved that, so... Um, and um, hopefully you'll get to hear them eventually. So that was impressive. I've only sent them to the lady yesterday for her to hear. And we'll see what comes out in the future. Um, it's me on a mission to learn how to achieve certain sounds, uh, achieve certain goals, get the, the studio up and running. And I'll tell you what, this studio now, when I switch things on, you know what it's like. One minute everything works and the next minute that fucking thing over there doesn't work and this needs to be plugged in and I'll put the lead in the wrong and it, it's just it's life it's 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 the things we go through to achieve the goals we desperately want to achieve oh hang on gotta stop a cup of tea's getting cold mm. so yesterday was amazing because when I listened to what I did and I'm telling you it was torture in the studio not the beats that was easy because I well I'll, we'll talk more about that later but I'm good at what I do the beats were easy the hard bit was getting the other sounds in the mix to cut through and I need to do a bit more listening to them and I need to do a bit more playing because the one thing that really made it work well and I did it I did it a lot was dramatically um, up the bass and also add some of the top but I might have overdone it you see and then compress that dynamically compress it so it brings it all up to a some a fairly flattish level and boy it really it really kicked through it worked I have never ever ever EQ'd a post-production mix that I've put together to that extent before and I'm still not convinced I got away with it. Uh, the tiny little sound blaster speakers in the kitchen that I listen to while I'm doing a salad or cooking or whatever, pouring a nice beer, lager shandy, um, they just can't cope with it. So that got me worried. Even at a quiet volume, the distortion is just, it's obvious the speakers can't cope. But they are tiny five watt bags of shit. But you've got to test anything you do on the best if you've got, which I haven't, and the cheapest. If it doesn't sound good on cheap speakers that 99% of the population play on, uh, it's going to sound shit. So that's a concern because I put so much EQ, especially at the bottom end, on these uh, 
drum and bass tracks, I am really concerned how the result sounds at the end. That's probably when you need a second opinion or you need to put something out there and have people you know, uh, very specifically criticise or constructively tell you how it sounds. I don't know how to do, do it. It's been a long time since I've done all this, so I never really did drum and bass before. I suppose my song Midnight 2am and I can't even remember the name of the other one. I don't know. Breakbeat. Well, not drumming. I don't know. You guys would know. Uh, Midnight 2 a.m. It's on my website, looplibrary.co.uk. And the other one is. Oh, what is it? I don't know. I don't Anyway, so that was a nice day yesterday and it was hard work in the studio. I didn't like what I was hearing when I was in the studio and then when I was downstairs after doing a bit of PPD post-production and just generally artificially dressing mutton up as lamb, <laughs> mutton up as lamb. Fuck, I was impressed. I cannot tell you. I would love to watch a drum and bass nightclub play this and watch the crowd because that's the best judge on the planet the people who love the music and I'm, I impressed myself I've been doing that a lot lately and when that happens you know you're onto a good thing um, so it's been helping me get this humble little studio up and going so I have still been busy since the last video about the Yamaha Pro 1 um, I can now tell you that I've got a different switch that I use. I think I've prepared the video. I've just not put it online. So there is a, a closer match for the boost switches in the Yamaha Pro 1. Do you know what it might be? Because I'm not playing music and I'm just talking. And the room is dead quiet at the moment, apart from the uh, studio PC. It could be that I'm just hearing so much of my own voice that 
I think there's something wrong, but I'm just so consciously aware that I sound a bit too much on the top end. But I haven't, I never changed the EQ on the mixer. Um, no, it's flat. Yeah, it's fine. It's It's got to be just me. But, um, shit, what was I talking about? Crack. Sorry. Can't remember. Um, yeah, I can't remember. Oh, yeah, sorry, the boost switches. So I've got a better match, and I've got the information, and I will get the video up. Maybe if someone kicks my ass, then I'll make it happen quicker. But they're all changed. So even the spare mixer, with the one that I bought as spares, and then found by the time I'd serviced it and cleaned it with a bottle of isopropanol, it was working that well. I thought, sorry, it'll give me an extra 16 channels plugged into two channels on my primary Pro 1 mixer. I know that's not the best way to work, but trust me, I am struggling for inputs. My whole Pro 1 is filled up already just from the 6000 sampler. So it, it, it is what it is. Uh, the joy about struggling is you make things work and you learn when you do that. So all the switches are changed and I can tell the difference. I mean, even now talking to you, I don't get that, you know, that white noise that comes from a switch that's normally opening or closing, um, going open circuit or intermittent, whatever you want to call it. I don't have to fiddle with the buttons anymore because they're so old. They're just crackly and making and breaking occasionally. Um, and so they've all, that's all been a success. So I changed, how many is on each one? 16 plus the Q switch, 17. So that's 34 switches, six solder joints on each. That's a lot of soldering. But I did it pretty quick and it all worked out well. This, these switches are a nightmare to put in and keep straight because the base of them rocks. It's, it's not quite a nice big flat surface. So it took me a lot longer to double check and triple check that all the switches were lined up and in the right way. What else have I been up to? Uh, yeah, uh, sometimes I think me talking to you guys is a waste of time because I come up with these rules. Sticking to Windows Movie Maker, mm, that's changed. Uh, there's so much good software out there, whether it's Premiere, DaVinci Resolve. Um, there's tons of them. And I've put about five or six on the... In the, in the internet PC in the back attic. Uh, that's got John's Doom on Quake, Juke 3D, all the games he likes, Minecraft, plus also the video editing. So I've got the video editing. To be honest, at the very least, I could use a complicated video editing software and just chuck the video in, not even do any fancy effects, and then compile it to an MP4, you know, export it, whatever you want to call it. That's easy enough to do. So it might have to be simple to start. I don't know. But to be honest, I spent a day or two on that, and I already learned a lot. I do learn quick when I'm focused and I have, an, and I have a purpose. I do learn very quick. Um, so that's kind of all done. OBS Studio's on there. And I've got this idea that I want to try it. I, I would like to try it with the mix first. But if we haven't got to a place where I can put that music out publicly yet, it's still not a problem because I will be doing it with my bang song anyway. So that's the song. The video is on YouTube and it's JSM bang video and it uses the Quake 1 engine. So it will eventually be done with that anyway. And I'm, I've got a funny feeling that the singer will allow me to put the stuff out there and we'll start promoting that in video format as well. But um, I want to use OBS Studio to live stream. Uh, let, let me explain what I'm go going to be doing with Bang, which is, again, it's on looplibrary.co.uk. You can find the video on YouTube that I did over 20 years ago, JSM Bang Video. And that will show you me running around in Quake and shooting lots of Reaper bots up and being egotistical in the music.
that's all getting a revamp i want to actually make the videos play back randomly and maybe even music too have the song chopped up it's an idea that's in my head it's going to take a while but it's not going to happen for six months because i have a purpose and a goal that doesn't include bang at this moment in time um really i think by the end of this year i will have done everything i need in the studio and the singer will have for definite some some final song versions to promote and publicly make money off, promote. And that's nice because it's it's been something I've wanted to do for a long time and it's been a vehicle where I can try out some ideas that I've been building up for the past couple of years and so far so good. Those ideas can be used elsewhere and promoted accordingly. Um, so at the moment... It's audio only. I haven't got a, a Samsung tablet filming. There's no need to do that at the moment. I didn't even think I was going to talk now. I was going to do a bit of freestyle jamming on the keyboard. Oh, Lord, hey. Do you think it's possible for me to jam and do two things? One, not sip my cup of tea. Actually, that is a good idea. Just bear with me a minute. And two, not try and sound like Asher D and Daddy Freddy. Oh, Lord of mercy, mercy. I can't help it. I always end up singing like that. It just seems to be what I am. Oh, yeah. So um, I haven't got a lot else to say. I'm, uh, yeah, okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop the recording now and then maybe have some jams. People, it's been a pleasure. I love you all. I wish you all well. Peace and blessings be upon you. If you've got a guitar or a keyboard, go on, get it out and make a song. It will cheer you up. Peace and blessings. JSM is out. See ya. Oh, yeah.